All right, so this is the first part to learning how to blind solve the Rubik's Revenge. As you notice, I did get a new camera. Um, it's much higher quality, however, the positioning has to be different, so it's going to look a little different than the other uh, blind solve tutorial. So, all right, here's part one. The first thing you have to do is make sure that your cube is very well scrambled. Alright, so if your cube is well scrambled like mine, then uh, you should see a lot of, basically it should look something like this. Alright, so probably the best part of blind solving the 4x4 is uh, you get creative. You get to decide how you want to position it. Basically, um, the way it worked with the 3x3 is that uh, they each had defined centers, basically one centerpiece on each side, and then the same works with the 5x5. Five five. There's um, an actual true centerpiece where everything rotates off of. Uh, the 4x4 four four does not have that, and with that, every side is um, can be whatever side you want it to be. Even though there's more yellow on the side, I can make this the blue side if I wanted to. I could make this the green side. I can do it however I want. And because of that, you get the freedom to turn your cube and position it however you may want. I think I need to scrub my cube a bit more. Hold on. Alright. So you get to choose how you want to position your cube. So let's say, um, you, well, what I like to do is I like to look at all the centers. Since the centers are the hardest part, you want to get as many as solved as you can. So I look at the centers, and I say, okay, how can I get them solved? Like here, I got lucky, three greens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to face these three greens on the left side, because as you know, I like to solve with white on top, green on the left side for blind solving. So I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be the left side. Now, I don't necessarily want the two whites on top if I can get something better, like if I can position it to be better. However, in this position, it's a very good position I'm in. I have three greens solved, two whites. Uh, I've got a red right here two yellows down here on the back side uh, I don't have any oranges but still anyways that's a pretty good beginning uh, remember you get to choose how you want it to be done uh, if you had different centers or if you liked a different arrangement I had then go ahead use that arrangement it, it doesn't matter so here's what you're gonna do first you're gonna choose what side you want to be your top left front down whatever you're gonna choose your sides for that like I've done. So this is going to be my top. I'm going to recognize by the two whites. This will be my left. I'll recognize by the three greens. Make sure you can always tell. Okay. Now, when you actually blind solving the cube, the first step you do is solve each edge piece. Now, um, to do that, you're going to have to do um, uh, something a bit different. Um, originally on the 3x3, three three, technically there was only one edge per two faces, like on the top and back face there's only one edge. Uh, however, this time there are two edges. But there's something you, uh, so because of that, each edge, um, each sticker of the edge does not have a letter. Now each uh, edge has a letter. So before, uh, you had one edge up here, top sticker was A, back sticker was B. This time, this edge piece is A, and this edge piece is B. The reason that you don't name the stickers is be is because um, on a 3x3, three three, you could have edges in the right spot, but not oriented correctly. You can't have that on a 4x4. Four four. The way it works is uh, basically like... I want to get a good explanation of this. Um, Alright, well, I'll just say... This edge piece. If this was technically my red face, then this edge piece would be solved. Red, white, and this would be uh, solved. Now, the w I'm not going to go through the whole explanation of it, but the way it works, this edge piece cannot be in this location and still be solved, like having red here and white here. It would have to be oriented the other way. I can prove this by actually taking apart the cube. The edge piece, there we go. The way the edge piece works is on the back of it, this curve um, only matches on the inside. Basically, the cur way the curve works, it's only on one side of it. It's hard to explain, but if you looked at it, you may not understand now. Let me get the edge piece in. There we go. Okay. So because of that, that's why each edge piece now has a letter instead of each sticker. Because there's only one orientation per location. So it makes it actually, I feel that it's easier. That way, um, 
even though the letter sequences are longer, which is expected since there's twice as many edge pieces. I just feel it's easier, considering you don't have to worry about the orientation of pieces. Either it is in the right spot, or it is not. So, here's how I look at it. First, what you're going to do, like I asked in the uh, other video, look at the M2R2 method. I want you to look at that and just get familiar with it. Basically, the way the method would work, on a 3x3, three three, you, on your center slice, let's just say that this is the center slice, you would look at this edge and look, where does it have to go on the cube? You would do a setup move um, and position that edge piece to this location up here. Okay? Once you position that, you would uh, do what is known as an M2 move, which is twisting the middle layer twice, as you should know, and then you would undo your certain moves, and when you're done, uh, whatever edge piece you were going for would be solved. Um, the side effect of it, however, were all your centers would rotate 180 degrees, that, and because that he had ways to fix that and, every, and how to work with that. So, um, so you're going to basically do the same way. Uh, the M2R2 method is supposed to be used for both corners and your edges. However, I'm going to do it just for edges. Corners, I solve my way. That's why I wanted to look at, I want you to be familiar with my method of solving the, uh, blind solving the Rubik's Cube. So, uh, first I'm going to tell you about the lettering. This is my top base. Just to refresh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. You are going to use C, D this time. I know you didn't use it last time. Remember, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Right around. Normally your I, J... Uh, edge piece. It's gonna be I J back here. K L M N. Just to inform you, this is going to be the red side in case you lost track. O P. Now here's your A B location. Behind it is Q R. Under C D is S T U V W X. Now you don't use U, so um, it will never be in any of your uh, memorization. But like I said, it's just good to have it there to make everything seem a bit smoother. If you wanted to, you can make a U, V, or you can make it um that one U, because you're not going to use this one, U, then V, W, if that's how you want to do it, go ahead. But I'm just going to continue to use it using up to the letter X. So, that's basically uh, how you look at all your edges. A uh, similar way to the 3x3. Three three. So what you're going to do is you look at your um, the front face, and you're going to look at the edge piece that's on the front face, the down face, and the R slice. Okay? So basically, it's this piece. This is my front face, so it's one of these... So it's uh, my front face and down face, so it's one of these two edges, and on the R slice, so it is this edge. You're going to look at this edge piece and see where does it have to go. Now, this is the green-yellow edge piece. I just got lucky that those two were together. It doesn't matter. This is the green-yellow edge piece. Now, it could go into either one of these locations. It can go into location W or location X. You look at it. Okay, how, well, which location does it belong in? Because really, it only belongs in one spot. Um, if I did like a DI move, this piece is in the right spot, but not oriented correctly. But the way it works on a 4x4, it technically is not in the right spot. So the way you, ha you have to look at it in a sense that, okay, how can I move this piece into one of these two positions and have it be oriented correctly. So the idea is, okay, I twist this, this piece, if I did a DI turn, would appear over here. It would be wrong, meaning it belongs in the other spot. If you didn't catch that, if I did, basically it means, if I did a DI turn right now, this piece would shoot to uh, location W, but not be oriented correctly, meaning it can't be in the right spot if it's not oriented correctly. Meaning it must belong in the other spot. I'm about to run out of time, I'm going to continue in the next part. So I keep watching. This is part one on how to blind solve the Rubik's Revenge. Thanks for watching.